Hello and thank you for joining me. I think you know by now, but I am Chloe and today we will learn how to summarise a story, then understand how we might use that story in a conversation with an English speaker. I'll also give you some time to compose your own answers, which we will finally use in a virtual conversation. Our lesson today will focus on the Great Wall, blocks of stone on the ice road. During the last lesson, you learned about how the ancient Chinese masons, I mean masons from a long time ago, by the way, not really old ones, <laughs> worked tirelessly to construct the Jiayu Pass Fortress, the final pass in the Great Wall. Now, of course, it's always very beneficial to know lots about our national heritage. I, for one, love to be able to tell people about old English traditions and ancient English architecture. But why would it be useful for you as a Chinese national to be able to talk about this story in English? As always, I would like you to take a moment to think about this and write down as many reasons why you think it would be useful. Perhaps you could think about different circumstances when the Great War might appear in a conversation. For example, if you were asked for advice from a tourist. I'll give you five minutes to think about some answers. The question again is this. Why would it be useful for you as a Chinese national to be able to talk about this story in English? Okay, go. Right, let's compare our answers. I believe there are many reasons why talking about the construction of the Great Wall's final pass in English would be useful. Number one, outside of China, one of the most popular and well-known landmarks is the Great Wall. As a child, if anybody mentioned China to me, the first thing that I thought about was this most amazing construction. To be able to talk about it with a foreign friend will be very interesting for them. Number two, aside from how long the wall is, not a lot of information is known about it for those who don't live in China. To be able to explain how the ancient people overcame building difficulties is a very impressive skill. Number three, again, outside of China, not a lot is known about Chinese wars, battles, or history in general. The wall was a strategic defence mechanism and to be able to inform foreign people about the lengths China went to in order to defend its country would be surprising for many. These are just three of my answers but I am sure that you can think of many more. The truth is, I know that I would love to hear about this story but unless I researched it on the internet one of the only other ways I would be exposed to it is if I spoke to a person who was from China. And that's where you come in! <laughs> so imagine that you were talking to a friend in English and the topic of the Great Wall arises. They might ask you, but how did they transport such heavy stone blocks throughout the mountains? Yes, you know the answer. But would they want to listen to you as you read them the whole story from the book? No, because it would take too long. So what do we need to do? Yes, we need to choose the best parts and make the story shorter. I'm going to provide you with some questions in order to help you summarise this story. Remember that your aim is to create a factual account of the story which is also interesting for the listener. If you feel that there are other parts of the story which can't be covered from my answers, then feel free to add those too. I understand that you learned a lot of information about the history of the war with David in the last lesson. Take as long as you need to answer these questions and when you are finished, please play the video. Hello, welcome back. How was that for you? Easy? Well, let's look at my example summary to see if you are on the right track. 
The construction of the Great Wall of China began thousands of years ago, in 220 BC. Its main purpose was to defend China against foreign invaders from the north. Today, we can still see the remains of this incredible 10,000-mile wall spun across mountains and through gorges across the northern parts of China. Unbelievably, the final pass, the Jiayu Pass Fortress, was built over 1,500 years after the first section. The Jiayu Pass Fortress needed over 1 million blocks of stone. However, its location was too steep and difficult to access. As a solution, Masons decided to use the Black Mountain stone materials close by. But after working tirelessly for months, in the beginnings of winter, they were no further forward. The stones were just too heavy to move. Ideas of cutting the stones into smaller pieces were suggested, but the proud Masons were adamant that this last fortress should look like the other eight sections. Another solution must be found. The resolution was stumbled upon by a worker who, in the depths of winter, poured his tea onto the ground and saw that it froze instantly. He nearly lost his step and slid down the mountain, realising that with smooth land and ice, they could glide the stones from place to place. The men quickly set to work, creating flat roads, then sprinkling water on them to fashion ice tracks. The completion of the final pass quickly followed, resulting in what we know today as the 10,000 mile Great Wall of China. The landmark is one of the greatest construction works in history. It took thousands of years to complete, but alongside this, think of how many hands and minds it took to build. Now, in North China stands the fusion of blood, sweat, dedication and determination for all to see. Representing the ancient Chinese belief that one should always prepare for danger in times of peace. Feel free to read over that a few times to get to grips with the language. So there you have my summary. But I know what you're thinking. It's still too long, right? Yes, I agree. It's quite normal when summarising a story to do a draft before writing the final edit. The summary above has taken the most important bits, but now it's your turn to make it even shorter. Around 100 to 150 words if possible. What a challenge, hmm? You can use my summary or the one that you have written. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to produce a shorter version of this story, one which you could memorise and retell if you were asked to. See you soon. Off you go. Wow, that was difficult, right? I did my own. What do you think? The construction of the Great Wall started in the northern parts of China around 220 BC. Its main purpose was for defence against northern invaders. This amazing structure now traverses over 10,000 miles of mountains and gorges and is China's most prolific landmark. But after over 1,500 years of construction, the completion of the final ninth pass, the Jiayu Pass Fortress, was nearly halted due to difficulties moving the large black mountain stones to their final resting place. A solution came during winter, when a savvy worker realised that if flat ice tracks were created, they could glide the large stones up the mountain. Now, in North China, stands a fusion of millions of hands, which sacrificed blood, sweat, dedication and determination for all to see, representing the ancient Chinese belief that one should always prepare for danger 
even in times of peace. There you have it. 143 words. Whew. Was yours similar? I'm sure it was close. Well done. So far, we have thought about reasons why it's useful to know about this story. And we have written a short version of the tale in order to be able to retell it to our foreign friends during a conversation. But I know what you're thinking. Whenever would you have a conversation with a foreign friend about the building of the Great Wall? Well, you'll be surprised. I'm going to pose a series of questions to you. And once you are ready to answer them, we will have a virtual conversation. It's worth noting that sometimes the topic of these stories might not always appear obviously in a discussion. Sometimes you might find yourself talking about what you did at the weekend and then next you are explaining the historical construction of the Great Wall, such as the natural flow of conversation. And so I wanted to challenge you with this today. Your aim is to try and explain the blocks of stone on the ice road story somewhere within the answers to the following questions. But don't force it. You have as much time as you need to think about the answers. Once you are ready, you can play the video again. Ready? Go! Hi, welcome back. How did you do? Well, I'm looking forward to our conversation now. I would like you to imagine that we are friends at a Chinese university. I've been learning about Chinese history and architecture, and I know some Chinese language, but you want to practice your English. You can stop the video and re-watch it at any time. When I feel like the answer you give might need a longer pause, I will put the question on the screen with a white background. At that point, you may pause the video. Otherwise, you can treat it like a normal conversation. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi, how are you? I'm also good, thanks for asking. I have been looking into visiting a few places in Beijing over the national holidays, but Everybody is telling me that there will be too many people. Do you agree? Have you had experience of this? Tell me about a place that you visited in China where it was incredibly crowded. Who did you go with and how did you feel about being there? Oh, wow, that sounds crazy. I know that in the national holidays, it's always really busy everywhere. I still really want to see something special, like the Forbidden City or the Great Wall. Um, do you think that it will stop me enjoying the experience if it's too crowded? Okay, well, I might still like to try it and see. Could you recommend anywhere? Um, have you travelled a lot? Who with? Ah, oh, great. What's your favourite Chinese landmark? The Great Wall? Really? Ah, tell me a little bit more about this, please. How did they manage to build such a thing in the ancient times? Did they have any problems? Wow, I didn't know about that. Many people don't know about the history of China's landmarks and simply attend such places to get photographs and tick off lists. <laughs> Do you think that tourism can hinder our ability to reflect on China's achievements? Is it important for people to understand the history of China's landmarks? Mm, I also think it's important, but as a tourist, it's sometimes really hard to access the information. For example, in some places, posters and signs are written in Chinese characters, or if I buy tickets online, the websites are in Chinese language. How can China encourage and support tourists to learn more about the history of China's landmarks? These are great ideas. Thank you so much for the talk. I think I will try and travel a little, but I will also now be prepared for the crowds. <laughs> and I'll know a little bit about the construction of the Great Wall too.